You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU welcomes in Army this weekend to Tiger Stadium. Uh, Brian Kelly, many, when he met with reporters on Monday, uh, gave a brief overview of this Army team, which, look, anytime a service academy is, anytime you're going to play against a service academy, there are certain things you know you're going to get. It's why, during bowl season, service academies are, what, are like an autoplay for sports betters because you always wonder who's going to care. They're going to care. They're always going to care and always going to play hard and always going to give their best. Here was Brian Kelly on uh, on this Army team. They're well coached. Um, Jeff Monken is a heck of a football coach. Comes from a great family of coaches. I know him well. I respect him as a football coach. His team will be well prepared. And, and much like... Um, how they represent the service academy, they re represent that as a football team. They keep coming at you. Four quarters of football, they're going to play physical. Their ruggedness shows out in the way they play. Um, for what it's worth, uh, Jeff Monk and the Army coach uh, did meet with reporters to kind of preview this week with Army coming in. And um, there's, there's a little bit of... Um, There's there's a little bit of the reality that exists there with with Jeff Munkin. You know, the the interesting thing about Army is, for years Navy dominated that Army Navy series. Navy had found its stride with Paul Johnson, then Kenny Matololo, and Army was just very bad. Jeff Munkin got there to Army at West Point and has built that program up. There's actually several local kids, not only from Louisiana, from the Baton Rouge area, uh, who've kind of had a little pipeline there to Army. Um, Connor Fanukin's a kid who went to my alma mater, Catholic High, who's a great defensive lineman who's going to play a big role for Army in this game. So it, it's cool that they're coming, but the realistic uh, component of this is Army is super outmanned, and Jeff Munkin knows it, and he essentially told reporters that when he met with them on Tuesday. I mean, I don't know where you start when you talk about personnel with them. You could go through their starting 22 and every guy that trots off the bench, their specialists. The, the guys that play special teams, they are, they are tremendously talented. And it will take a monumental effort for us to, to challenge these guys and, and have an opportunity to be in the football game. Um, it'll take a monumental effort for us to be in the football game. Most of the time when you hear a coach preview a game, they're going to say, we're going to go play our best. I like my guys. We're going to play four quarters. We're going to play hard. See how it goes. It's different when you hear Coach A is going to take a monumental effort for us to stay in the game. But remember, a week ago, Hugh Freeze at Auburn said essentially the same thing about Jaden Daniels. And there were a lot of people who did the eye roll thing when Hugh Freeze said, you can't really stop him. You hope you just hold him to field goals. And you thought, ah, he's not really kidding. Well, Auburn literally did not get a stop in the second half against LSU. They scored touchdowns on all four possessions in the second half. Auburn did hold LSU to two field goals in the first half. LSU had two Red zone possessions where penalties backed him up and they had to settle for field goals, which kind of kept it a game at halftime. So it was mission accomplished for a half, but not so much in the second half. Well, Jeff Munkin was asked about Jaden Daniels and essential and the LSU offense and essentially said the same thing about this LSU offense, which is really they're they're unstoppable. I don't know what you do. Do you take away the pass? Um, they run it as good as anybody in the country. You take away the run, they throw as good as anybody in the country. They've got a record-setting quarterback, a record-setting receiver. They're enormous on the offensive line. Talented is an understatement. What we've got to do is play sound defense, try to play very well fundamentally, playing blocks, keeping leverage on the football, running really hard to the ball, getting as many guys around it as possible, and trying to make things happen through our system. Um. When you hear Jeff Monk and talk about the LSU offense, where it's like, what do you do? Do you take away the pass? Well, they run it exceptionally well. They're huge on the offensive line. Then you talk about Jaden Daniels being as good as he is. The the thing, actually, can you play the other one about Jeff Monk uh, about Jaden Daniels? Here was Jeff Monk specifically about about Jaden Daniels. He's got arm talent and the feet to get out of trouble to get the ball delivered to a to a guy in a in a zero blitz. You, know, you can rush three. 
and drop everybody back there in eight. He'll find a way to to put the ball in there. He, he's just really talented. He's a really good player. It's why it's why they're in the top ten in the country in rushing and passing. Okay, that almost so, never happens. Top ten in the country in rushing and passing. It almost never happens. What that is, represent what that represents is incredible balance. And the guy that deserves an awful lot of credit is Mike Denbrock. And I know a year ago, when LSU at times struggled to find its footing, there were some people in this fan base that kind of questioned and said, like, is Denbrock really the guy? And what I kept defaulting to here was, if you go back and look at Mike Denbrock's offenses at Cincinnati, yes, Cincinnati, for those AFROGs. At least if you've been here for four years, you get the reference. If you go back and look at Denbrock's offenses at Cincinnati, when he showed up, they were like triple digits and everything. By the time he left, when he when he established himself, they got better every year, and he had Desmond Ritter for multiple years. Desmond Ritter was the two-time American Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He was one of the top the top quarterback in Cincinnati's football history. He accounted for over 12,000 yards and 116 touchdowns, and they finished nationally that year top 10 in every major statistical category. He had a veteran quarterback who knew his offense, and they had built it and grown. It, it didn't take four years for Denbrock to get there at LSU because he inherited Jaden Daniels here, and in two years with Daniels, you're seeing what they're seeing, but... Mike Denbrock deserves an extraordinary amount of credit because he is a super smart offensive coach that's had this level of success at all of his stops. And he's a guy that the players absolutely love to play for because he is very much a fatherly figure on the field. He's not the guy that's a... Now, when when Mike talks, he talks very loudly. Like, he just you just can't help but know where he is because he talks very loudly. But he's not the the angry, screaming coach. He's the kind of coach that'll put your arm around you and tell you he loves you, and that resonates with a lot of young people. That's the personality part of it. When you blend that with the knowledge of offense and the ability to coach it up, you have what's transpiring. And Brian Kelly kind of talked about all that on Monday with Denver. Well, he's central to it because it's uh, you know certainly coordinating it. Look, I, I, I'm a big believer that you know, you don't really get a buy-in unless you get everybody to weigh in. So, you know, he's getting input from the entire offensive staff and, and then, you know, putting it together. You know, it's never a one-man show. It's it's a collaborative, I think, cohesive event when a coordinator is doing his job. If, if he's coming in early and scripting everything by himself and leaving everybody else to, to kind of wonder what's going on, usually have a group that, that has good days and bad days. This group is consistent, and it's because they all work together and everybody has a role. And credit to Mike's leadership and his ability to um, bring everybody in uh, to the process. And then, you know, his play calling. You know, he matches play calls to players, gets the ball to playmakers. And, and that's what this is about. This is not about plays. This is about players. And I think he's hit both of those uh, out of the park. Just as a, for instance, about play calling, think, think about this specifically. One of the plays that this LSU offense has run pretty consistently this year is the jet motion with the shovel pass. I, a lot of people are calling it a pop pass. I like maybe that's what you call it. I like I, I was we we in our terminology when I played and this was a 20 years 25 years ago, but a pop pass was just a quick pass to the tight end over the middle. Maybe this is called a pop pass, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. The play where the the receiver's in motion, it's a shotgun snap and Jaden just shovels the pass forward to the receiver in motion. They've run that with Aaron Anderson. They've run it with Malik Neighbors. They've run it with Brian Thomas. The point being, you've run that play with no less than three different players already at this point in the season, so you are not predictable by personnel. It's not so much as to say if Aaron Anderson's in the game, they're running that play, or if Brian Thomas is in motion, he's not. they're not running that play. Now you have to respect it every time. That's the creativity that you continue to see in the layers of this offense, which are so fun to watch, which make it fun to watch. Last week, we threw a ton of bouquets to Joe Sloan, and he deserves it. Joe Sloan has done an amazing job, in particular, working with the quarterback's accuracy, and that has clearly manifest over two years. It's also worth noting 
the job Mike Denbrock has done. As Brian Kelly said, it's collaborative. It's getting all of these people's opinions involved, these very smart coaches, to come with a collaborative effort that you could see manifest on Saturday nights. And boy, it has been fun to watch this year. So salute to this great offensive staff. Yes, we talked about Sloan last week, and certainly Mike Denbrock deserves uh, his bouquets as well for what LSU's been able to do so far. Uh, top five in the country and everything that matters right now. We still half a season to go. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.